So what are the characteristics of an ideal operational amplifier? First, the input impedance. The input impedance means this is the ORI. This is infinity. So it means the, in, uh, the input resistance of this operational amplifier is very high. Output impedance. Output impedance means the output terminal also there is some resistance. This resistance is almost zero. So RO, this is the output resistance, is zero. And the bandwidth, bandwidth of this operational amplifier is infinity. And similarly, the voltage gain, AV, B, A, A means the gain and B is indicating the voltage. So voltage gain is also infinity. So that's why we had seen the very large value for the general operational amplifier, 10 to the power six, for example. And when V1 is equal to, V2 is equal to zero, then output is equal to zero. So you just apply zero volt here and you apply this zero volt here. It's equal, right? And the output should also be zero. It will be zero. So these are some special characteristics of the operational amplifier. So this is a very important characteristics, input impedance and output impedance. Input impedance is very high. Output impedance is very low. So infinity and zero. This is very useful in many circuit uh, constructions. Okay, so uh, two more parameters uh, or characteristics you should know. Another one is called slew rate. Slew rate means how fast the operational amplifier is able to reach from zero volt to plus Vsat. So how fast the operational amplifier can reach from this is the zero volt to plus Vsat, that is slew rate. Okay, so for ideal operational amplifier, it can reach the Vsat very easily, like within no time. Like zero time. So that is why we call slew rate for the ideal operational amplifier is infinity. The unit, we measure the slew rate in terms of volt per microsecond. Okay, this is slew rate. Uh, please try to remember this. Uh, slew rate is also one of the important characteristics of this operational amplifier. And now we will see one more parameter that is called common mode rejection ratio. So we simply call this as a CMRR, CMRR. So common mode re rejection ratio means what? How well the operational amplifier is able to reject the common input voltages. Common input voltages means what? I apply the same voltage in both terminals. So for example, I apply here zero volt, right? So maybe I apply three volt now to this V2, ter uh, this terminal, and I also, I apply three volt to this non-inverting input terminal. So I am applying the same input terminal. According to the formula, what is the formula we have? VD, uh, sorry, um, VO, that is the output, is equal to VD times A. So VD is the difference between V1 and V2. So here V1 and V2 is the same voltage. So that is uh, V1 minus V2 means, sorry, three, uh, three minus three that is zero and multiply by A. So the output should supposed to be zero, right? So that is what we are saying here, how well the operational amplifier is able to reject the common input voltages. So output is zero volt for these three and three volt input voltages. It means this operational amplifier is rejecting these common input voltages. So you should not apply the same voltage in both terminals, then the output is going to be zero. There is no use of this operational amplifier. So we should always uh, apply something, uh, some different, there should be some difference between these two input voltages. Okay, so this is called common mode rejection ratio. Uh, this is a good one actually. So when we, when we use this operational amplifier in the comparator circuit, comparator means what? We, we, we want to know uh, these two input voltages are equal or these two input voltages are greater or less. For example, we have V1 and V2. If V1 is greater than V2, we want to know that. If V1 is less than V2, we want to know that. If V1 is equal to V2, we want to know that. So this is the logical comparison actually. 
if i tell you one practical example where we use this comparison operation let's say uh, we are measuring the temperature in our home maybe in our bathroom so we want to maintain the temperature so for example uh, in my uh, operational amplifier i set one as a reference voltage maybe this is the we have space to draw Okay, so here we have positive, here we have negative, and we have two inputs, and we have the output. And here we have the biasing voltages. This is V plus, and this is V minus. And here we are getting output. And we have V1, and we have V2. So I set up the reference voltage uh, in one terminal. For example, I set the reference voltage as uh, maybe that is the temperature. Uh, I set up like a, it should be 18 degree, minimum 18 degree. So uh, the 18 degree, of course, we have to convert in terms of voltage. So I set up some kind of voltage, maybe, maybe this is a plus 3.1 volt or plus 3 volt. So this is uh, the other terminal is connected to the sensor. The sensor is always sensing the temperature in the room and then converting in the voltage in terms of voltage and applying to this terminal. So uh, whenever I get three more than this three volt, maybe uh, I'm getting like a four volt here. So here, what is that? V1 is greater than V2. Four volt is greater than three volt. So I'm getting the output. So it means there is no emergency. So everything is good. But in the winter time, the temperature goes down drastically down maybe now the temperature is maybe minus 10 degree. So now the temperature, of course, based on this, the sensor will convert this temperature in terms of voltage. Now maybe this one will be just one volt or two volt. So now what is happening? This one volt is smaller than this three volt. Then I get alarm. So this is the comparison process. The comparison is just comparing the input voltages. If it's greater than or equal or less than, the reference voltages. So we can use uh, this kind of operational amplifier in this kind of applications. That is the practical use. So this common mode rejection ratio is an important parameter. This is called CMRR. For ideal operational amplifier, the CMRR is infinity. It means very high. So now these are the characteristics of the operational amplifier, ideal operational amplifier. It means what? So the operational amplifier should be perfect, but the ideal operational amplifier can never be mad. You know, just like uh, the human beings, uh, we can say like, I am perfect, but it's not really true. No one is perfect. Everyone has some issues. So uh, similarly, this operational amplifier, ideal operational amplifier should have these characteristics, but practically, there is no such an ideal operational amplifier. Practical amplifiers has some limitations. We will see now uh, because any voltage or any sorry any device has limitations in terms of currents and voltage. This is the characteristics of the practical operational amplifier. This is the IC741, integrated circuit 741. This is, these are the characteristics of this particular IC or specific IC. So the input impedance, it's not infinity. It's not like a very, very large. It's just only about two mega ohms. The output impedance is not exactly zero. It has some value. It has 75 ohms. So open loop gain, yeah, that is not infinity. That is also, uh, it also has certain value. That is 10 to the power five. Similarly, offset voltage is also one millivolt. And slew rate is not infinity. It is also 0.5 volt per microsecond. I think it's the uh, unit is microsecond. It's not a millisecond. Um, and CMRR, this is not, that is not infinity. That is also 70 to 90 dB. So when you go to the data sheet of any IC, uh, operational amplifier IC, you will see these details. These details are very important for you to build a circuit by using this IC chip or by using this component. Okay, so uh, this is part of your assignment one. You just go online, uh, you browse some data sheets for operational amplifiers. There are so many different types of 
or different operational amplifier ICs available in the market. Uh, so this is IC741, this is IC uh, CA3130, and this is LM358, and so on. So you just go to digikey.no, and you type 741, then you will get a list like this. And you will see here, there are so many different types, and you can see the keyword here, op amps, or operational amplifier, simply we call this uh, op amps, the first two letters and uh, fourth letters from the second word. Um, so you just click this one, then you will get this page. In this page, you will see so many different components. Of course, there are so many different manufacturers and they produce different operational amplifiers. And you click the data sheet. So the data sheet is available here. It's free to download. So, and then you just download and then read the data sheet. So if you are going to be the design engineer in the future, so you should know how to read the data sheet. Uh, so you don't need to use only DigiKey. You can use any other websites to buy, uh, to just look for this component. You know, these websites are used to buy the electronic components, the DigiKey also. So when you, before you buy the component, you have to check the data sheet, which one you want, you want to buy. So you can use either of these websites or you can use the DigiKey, like the one I said just before. So, after you read the data sheet, uh, you just uh, write in the report like uh, what you have observed. Are you able to find the characteristics like uh, what I have told you just before input impedance value, output impedance value, and uh, sleeve rate, CMRR value, and so on. So, if you see different operational amplifier ICs, they are optimized for different parameters. So, you may wonder I am just putting operational amplifier I'm in the search. Uh, search engine, I'm getting so many operational amplifiers. Why? So because each operational amplifier is optimized for different parameters. So let's say if one operational amplifier, maybe this operational amplifier is optimized, it's optimized for very high slew rate. It means the output should reach VSAT very fast, plus VSAT or minus VSAT. And another uh, operational amplifier maybe this is optimized for very high open loop gain. So I want really the open loop gain A should be much more higher, not 10 to the power five. The IC741 we had seen, uh, the open loop gain is 10 to the power five, right? A is, but I want even more. So then I can choose the another IC, I have to check the data sheet and what is the A value given in this uh, IC. And similarly, another IC, you can find some other parameter which is more optimized. So based on your application, you have to choose which IC you want to use. Of course, in the lab, you don't have a choice. You will just use whatever the IC is available. But if you really want to build some circuits for your hobby or after you work for some company in some projects, this, these are important uh, things you need to consider. So we are uh, looking at the course from industry perspective. Okay, so, and if you see some other ICs, you might find that is optimized for uh, very low offset voltages. Yeah, so each uh, operational amplifier IC is optimized for different parameters. So depending upon your application, you need to decide which parameter is critical for your application. Maybe you are, uh, you are designing the analog to digital converter by using this op amp, then you have to find out like uh, which parameter is more critical and important for your application. So then you have to select the IC accordingly. Maybe you want very low offset voltages in your ADC uh, circuit. So you will go for the IC, which is having the best uh, offset voltage based on the data sheets. Okay, so that is uh, the practical way of selecting the correct IC to build your circuit.